Hello, I'm Anthony with Fun Robotics Network, and today we are here with 2383 and Engineers. They're from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They were the finalists Alliance captain at the Northern Lights Regional and our second in qualification match at the Green Country Regional. With all their iterations, their designs, and their amazing Oculus Quest map, we'd like to talk about that here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options through their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Okay, so why don't you start talking about the mechanisms of what makes this robot so unique? Yeah, so this is our V4 iteration of our robot. Um, what we have is a multifunctional end effector system, which is able to manipulate both game pieces, algae and coral, um, attached on a pivot to our two-stage elevator. So we'll have it deploy right now. So this is when getting the algae out of the out of the uh, coral and up. And then this is a scoring on L4. And if you follow me around here, this is our new and improved um, coral ground feeder intake. So if you want to pop it down. This goes right up like this and then goes through our handoff to our end effector. And then in the front right here, this is our latch winch climb mechanism, which is a, a sub five second climb. And now I'm gonna hand it off to Gallon, who's gonna talk about our iterations and design of our entire robot. Yeah, so with all your different iterations, why don't you go into uh, what made you decide and go with what you have with before? Yeah, so some of the main changes that we made throughout the season um, is the feeder and the climb. So we're going to dive into that. With the feeder, we saw at the Northern Lights Regional, uh, defending robots were able to exploit the fact that funnel robots had to always return to a singular human, uh, human pair station. So we opted for a ground feeder that will make it more adaptive. Uh, so what we have is uh, the intake and then we have a spring-loaded mechanism that allows the coral to reorient into the transfer. If you can put it all the way down, it's going to send it all the way up into the transfer system and pass it on to the end effector. Due to our time constraints, we kind of fit our ground feeder so it was able to fit with the end effector. And then for the climb, um, some of the biggest changes we saw was the size of it and its complexity. Initially, uh, during our RI3D robot, we opted for a much larger latching mechanism that sent the robot that had an upside down elevator that sent the a cage into the robot and pushed the robot upwards. But after cons uh, after consolidating it, minimizing it, we ended up reducing it to this size with a latching mechanism me mechanism right here. The wheels will intake it inwards. And then it, like Max said, it winches it all the way backwards to climb up. Okay, so with your uh, ground intake, uh, what made you guys decide to go with how it is now versus a, maybe you know a different style or just trying to intake it straight off the ground? What made you go with the funnel and all this kind of things? So the main uh, the main thing we had to focus on was weight. We only had around 15 pounds of weight uh, left on our robot to uh, to give to the ground feeder. So we were opting for active rollers on the side to guide the coral inwards. But with those extra wheels, extra plates, uh, it, it ended up being overweight. So we opted for kind of this passive kind of alignment that would send it all the way up to our end effector. Awesome. So. Uh, as we can see, there's a lot of mechanisms on this and a lot of moving parts. Uh, tell me, how do you guys optimize that and how do you guys automate all those movements? Yeah, so as you said, with all these moving parts on top of the robot, we decided that the best course of action for our electronics would be a upside down belly pan. So what we did was we put a Lexan sheet and then we riveted that to our chassis and mounted all our electronics either with Velcro or some double-sided tape on the underside of our robot. And then to cover all that, we put another Lexan sheet on the bottom that's removable with some bolts. Um, and on top, we have a limelight, and then we have an Oculus Quest at the back, which I'll pass off to Henry to explain. Yeah, so one of the biggest unique things about your guys' robot is the fact that you guys do have uh, an Oculus Quest on your robot. Uh, tell me what, how you guys are using it, what made you guys think about it, all those kinds of things. Yeah, so this season we decided to use uh, a Quest to do our odometry, because when we looked at this game, when it first got released, we saw that there were very few April tags that you could see multiple at a time. So we were going to have to rely on single tag 
which we found last season to be not the most accurate. So we wanted a much more precise odometry method so that we could score fully automated on the reef. You only have about plus or minus an inch tolerance when scoring. So we used the quest snap, but we also needed to use a limelight to look at April tags. And we developed our own sensor fusion algorithm to fuse the quest nav odometry and the limelight so that we get the best of both worlds. We can use the April tags when we're very close to the reef to make sure that we have that super accurate odometry there. And we can use the quest snap to get across the field so that no matter where we pick up a coral, we can automatically drive straight to the reef. Which leads us into our button board over here. This is our custom button board that we built for this game. Up here, there are a couple switches. So these are all used to override different automation functions of the robot in case anything stops working during a match, we can turn them off. These buttons over here are how we determine what branch we're gonna score on. So this is the left side, and this is the right side, L4 through L1. This is for the barge, for the processor, and these are to uh, remove algae. Then over here, we have our reef buttons. So no matter where you are on the field, whenever you press one of these buttons, the robot will immediately start driving over to the reef. And then you can press one of these and it'll go out, move the elevator to the correct level, go in and automatically score. Awesome, so with what we have here, uh, what else do you think makes your bot so unique and what makes you guys uh, stand out among other teams? So uh, what we pride ourselves on is we're all student built. Um, this entire robot is designed, tested, and manufactured by us students in our laboratory. Um, so we do that using our CNC drill, uh, CNC mill, our drill press, bandsaw, um, and then we also have our amazing design team. So Gallon over here is one of the head designers. Um, he's used his amazing iterative design process to test multiple variations. Like we said before, this is our V4 version of our robot overall. However, we have done multiple iterations of our end effector and um, ground feeder as well. Uh, probably around six to eight for each um, separately. And then as well as our climb is like a third version of it. Um, so we just keep learning it, it uh, being more innovative on how we can save space, save weight, while being able to do all the functions that we initially hoped for. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. With you guys being an Open Alliance team and you guys uh, showing off all that you guys have, uh, a lot of teams can definitely learn from this uh, and maybe can take some of what they've seen uh, from you guys. Uh, and so thank you guys. This has been uh, 2383 Engineers on Behind the Buffer. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu first.